Yes people and welcome back to AJ Cars and welcome back to another video on the E46 and today I'm going to be telling you the five things you need to know before you buy one of these cars. But before we get into the video I want to thank everyone who has subscribed recently. We just hit 12,000 subscribers which is a crazy number for me. My next goal is 20,000 so if you do enjoy the content on this car make sure you hit the subscribe button. Let's get straight back into the video. Now let's get into the first thing you need to look out for on these cars. Now these cars are old. This car is 25 years old, 1999, and they started in 98. That is 25 to 26 years old, these cars are. So the one thing you need to look out for, which is a big one, is rust. Now that is rust underneath, and that is rust on the bodywork. This car was pretty rust free when I bought it, which was fortunate, but I do have a little bit of bubbling on the quarter just here, and that is purely for the fact that there is a bracket just behind that where the bumper slides onto when it holds and they rust from the inside because they're metal. So it's a bit of a stupid idea from being with you. A lot of people just take them out and they get the quarter repaired and it never comes back. But I would look out for rust in these areas mainly and also underneath. Now, if you are buying a car, you aren't really gonna be able to see what is underneath the car. However, I would definitely recommend checking it straight away or even speaking to the guy to get it on a ramp, show you underneath because they can rust pretty bad underneath. Now, of course, rust is a bit of a pain with most cars. However, if you did have rust underneath this car and it hasn't gone through, it hasn't eaten any of the metal, it's more surface, you could prep it and undercoat it. And I assure you, you wouldn't get any more rust because these bodies are very solid. But if it has eaten through, unfortunately, you are going to have to do some work to sort it. But again, if a guy can send you a photo or a video of anything underneath the car beforehand, that would be ideal because then you know the car is strong. I'm pretty sure you know exactly what's coming next. That is why the bonnet is open and the engine bay is exposed. And that is because you need to keep up with maintenance on these cars. Now, I think it does depend mainly on the engine that you get. This is a 2.5 litre six cylinder. So it takes a lot of maintenance to keep it running well. If you don't, you're gonna run into some major issues and that is a big, big problem because BMW parts can get very, very expensive and labor costs to sort an engine like this would be quite substantial. So I would highly recommend getting your servicing done frequently, keeping up with it as much as you possibly can. And also doing that, I would say get the gearbox done as well. So gearbox, if it's a manual, I would definitely recommend getting that service the same time you get this service because they're old gearboxes. So they're gonna have a lot of wear. So I would definitely recommend getting them done the same time you get this done. Now I am going to keep the bonnet open for the next one because it's more of an add-on from the last point and that is oil. These cars do drink a lot, a lot, a lot of oil. Now that's just from what I've been told. This car particularly, I don't know if it's the way I drive because I drive pretty conservatory. Conser conservatively, conservatively, conservatively. So I don't drink a lot of oil. Now, I have heard a lot of people go through oil like water. It is literally, they're topping it up weekly. So I'd say it is something to look out for. It kind of depends on the engine, the way you drive. This is a 2.5 litre six cylinder. So it takes a lot of oil and I don't really have to top it up that much. And I do check it as well. But I would say just to be safe, keep some oil in the back of your car just so you can top it up whenever you need to. And I would say check it every other week just in case. And if you do need to top it up, you can top it up. So the next one we're going to go into, and it applies to a lot of you watching this video, and it's fuel. Now, this car drinks fuel, and I don't know whether it's because of the exhaust or the engine size, but it does go through fuel very, very, very much. So this is a 2.5, as I said, it does have an exhaust on, and I know a lot of you watching this video are going to want to put an exhaust on your car. All you need to remember is, the bigger the exhaust, whether that's a back box, whether you've got a non-res or you've got a no-cell catalyst, you are going to use more and more fuel. And these cars do drink a lot of fuel anyway. And the bigger the engine, the bigger the exhaust, the more fuel you are going to go through. So I would be conservative, I got that one right, with how much you actually drive the car if you do have an exhaust, a big engine, because you will go through fuel, I assure you. I probably put 25 pound a week in but i don't actually do that many journeys and when i drive it i notice that i actually relentlessly look at the fuel gauge because i know it's going down so keep that in mind so 
the fifth and final thing you need to look out for and again it's pretty difficult to look at but i would recommend getting a video and that is bushings underneath the car the subframe on these cars because they're so old the bushings go on them especially on the subframe and you'll hear a massive knocking and it just won't feel stable at all and that goes the same for the suspension components like your bottom arms out of your hub wherever there's a bush i would definitely recommend getting proof that they're fine because if they are shot you're going to hear a lot of knocking i actually had my rear tracking arm on this side the bushing went and it was honestly the knocking it was like someone was smacking a spanner on the glass it is so loud you don't even realize how bad they are until they go and how important they can be so i would definitely recommend checking all the bushes of course there is options to sort them bushes anyway if the subframe did go you can just replace them they are a part you can order or you can poly bush them so it's like an uprated bushing so they're more for track use but they are very strong and sturdy and they won't go on you again not too expensive but it is a cost that you'd have to do if they did go so i would definitely recommend checking them or just uprating all of them as soon as you buy the car well that is going to be it for the top five things you need to know about this e46 if you did enjoy this content make sure to hit subscribe button i really want to be in 20,000 subscribers before the end of the year so you guys can help me do that if you did enjoy this video as well make sure to hit the like button and i'll see you guys in the next one